Hi, welcome to this management science tutorial entitled Transportation Modeling. We have got some suppliers in Des Moines, Omaha and Kansas City which supply Chicago and Kinkanate and St. Louis with grain. Our objective is to figure out what is the optimal uh, shipment configuration. There are nine links, the three brown ones, three blue ones and three purple ones. Each link has a different cost associated with it. So for instance, to ship something from Des Moines to Chicago costs us four dollars for four dollars per ton. Okay. So what are the tasks which we have to do? put the data into Excel, create a decision matrix. So that's basically saying what, how much tonnage should we send over the links. Compute the total quantity per mill. That means how much is shipped to the mill. And uh, of course, how much we supply per elevator. And to actually figure out what is the optimal configuration we are going to use the Excel solver. So let's start Excel and uh, create our decision matrix. Decision matrix. Oops, what happened here? Decision matrix. And uh, we are going to ship something from a grain elevator. And we have got three of them. One, two, three. And we are going to ship the things to mill one, two, and three. So we'd like to decide how much tonnage shall we send from grain elevator one to mill one, from grain elevator one to mill two, etc taking into consideration the costs which we are going to specify in a second. Let's format it first nicely and neatly. So we are going to use a style and format that as a table. I'm going to use this style and say my table has a header. I'm going to convert it back to a range and I'm just going to copy the table and going to reuse it as a cost matrix. So what are the costs actually to ship one ton of grain from um, grain elevator one to mill one is six dollars, then to mill two eight dollars and ten dollars, then from elevator two to mill one is seven dollars, eleven dollars and eleven dollars and from elevator three to one two three is four five twelve four five twelve currency is all in dollars um, and all these units are per ton And here we would like to actually figure out what is the tonnage, uh, the quantity, how many tons, how many uh, tons shall we send by which links. Okay, before we can decide about that, we need to know how much do we need in each mill and um, how much can, we, can each grain elevator supply. So let's start with the supply. So the supply from grain elevator one. What is the maximum supply? We had that in our specifications here. 
So 150, 175 and 275. 175, uh, sorry, 150, 175, and 275. Probably would have been easier if I just copied it. It's not so easy to copy actually. Let's see, can I copy it from the specifications? Yeah, I could, but it looks quite ugly. Okay, so I'll delete it again. Okay, anyway, now that we've got the supply, let's just look at the demand. Um, what is my demand? We have got 200, 100 and 300. In mill 1 we have got 200 tons, mill 2 300 tons, uh, 100 tons and mill 3 300 tons. So the total is, what is the total? The total demand is 600, dem uh, 600 tons and what is our total supply? I'm just going to put it into the same cell. I'm concatenating that with end and just make a separator and uh, concatenate that again with the sum of my supply. Now I can see 600 is my demand and 600 is my supply. So that's, that's great, that's, that means I have a balanced supply uh, balanced transportation problem. I mean supply equals demand. Good. Um, so these are my limits but I would like to know also what is actually what do I actually ship? I would like to uh, record that as well. So I'm just going to shift it slightly down there. Shift that as well. Um, I'm just going to move these couple of cells to the right. And we are going to say um, how much have I shipped. and how much have I supplied. So grain elevator, so let's for instance say I ship 10 tons from grain elevator 1 to mill 1, 20 and 30. So these are arbitrary values right now just, just to test it out whether it works. And this is the sum. So I've sh shipped now 60 tons so that's this is 60 tons and this is smaller than 150 so the, the supplied ones must be of course smaller than the maximum supply so maybe I should call that max supply and demand um, so basically mill one what did it received shipped, received, received might be a better word. So what have they received? That's just the sum up there. Sum of everything which went to mill one. Oops. Okay, easier way. Sum 10. So for instance put 5 and 5 so then we have 20 tons which have received. Okay, so we'll just copy that formula. Copy that formula. It all makes still sense. So if I change something in here, 
should all be reflected. So 15 tons are supplied, 30. And of course we need to ensure that the limits are not broken. More precisely, eventually, eventually the total sum must equal this one. So that means the sum which I've got done here, this 80, should be actually 600 eventually. And um, just like before, I'm just putting some two formulas together in one, one cell. So it's a little string conversion trick. And here we go. So of course it could be unbalanced as well. But uh, eventually it must be 600. So unbalanced transportation problems are slightly different to do because you have to have inequalities in the constraints. Okay, so however we want to find these values automatically and using the solver. Before I do that, I'll just do some more formatting to make it more look more pretty. Um, so here I've got cell styles and I'm just going to use this one. Um, just going to use that all over and down there I'm just going to use this style again maybe not bold okay so how do we do that um, well, first of all, we want to make sure that we maximize the profit. That's, that means we would go and multiply, so we could do that manually, this $6 with the tonnage. Then we know exactly how much it costs us to transport 10 tons from elevator 1 to mill 1, which is, of course, $60. Then, of course, we could propagate that. Um, so here we see the, our total costs and we could just add them all up so that means we go and do our sum do that for all three and another sum of these ones gives us a total sum. Since we are doing that so often, there's actually a nice beautiful function which can do that for us, which is called sum product. I'm going to put it into the top. So, uh, we want to minimize the costs, minimize cost, which is the sum product. So we did a product first of the quantity times the cost per ton. So we do that now for all elements. And then we added them all up. This is exactly what the sum product function does. So if we compare it, 1025 is exactly the same as this 1025. So what I'm saying is, we don't really need that. This is just an illustration of what the sum product is doing. Okay, so now let's find the optimal configuration. Again, we start our solver, which is in the data ribbon solver. And we want to, to first say what is our objective. Our objective is to minimize the total cost. So minimize. And what cells are we going to change? We are going to change 
we are going to change uh, these cells. These are called our decision variables. And of course, this is subject to constraints. So I'll add some constraints. So first of all, the supply constraints. So these supplies must be always smaller than what we can supply, than the maximum supply. However, we can even go a step further and say they must be equal because it's a balanced transportation problem. Now, these are actually three constraints. So that means uh, 60 must be smaller, 150, 135 must be, uh, must be equal, 175. Right now they are violated, but eventually they should be fulfilled. Okay, let's add now the demand constraints. So everything which is received must equal the demand. 200, 100, and 300. Again, I'm going to use the simplex, uh, simplex solver, which is good enough, and we get a solution. So the solution which minimizes our cost is this one. Well, it's it, there could be different solutions. However, the the solution value of four thousand five hundred twenty-five dollars must be always the same. The tonnage might vary. In particular, we did not specify any integer values or anything like that, so um, there could be quite some odd tonnage as well. If our constraint, and I suppose it would be quite reasonable to say our constraint is as well that the tonnage must be an integer, then we should add it to the solver as well. So solver, and let's say, let's add another constraint and say, all these values should be actually integers and we can solve it again which is exactly the same on top of that it's probably quite advisable to say none of these values should be negative you know, be completely correct we need to add another constraint which says all these cells must be uh, greater or equal zero then now we have a completely specified uh, integer program Okay, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I'm looking forward to seeing you for the next one.